Hey everyone, you're watching the raw and uncut version of today's sellout show where we talk about owning it. Own it, yeah. crush it. Own it, in it to win it. Diana, tell everybody who's gonna be on today. And yeah, why so we have a very special guest. Her name is Alice Hyman and you should really watch all the way to the end because the, um, the back of the envelope question is kind of fun and it sort of <laughs> tails into what we talk about so that was kind of cool but <laughs> enjoy watching Alice Hyman and how to own your territory like a boss. All right here we go. Boss here we go. Lady. Welcome, welcome everyone to the sellout show where we are always sold out. Mm -hmm. I am Diana Guerin and I am the irreverent sales girl where my mission is to bring a dash of dignity to the art of selling. Hey Diana, hey everyone, I'm Sean Carroll Sandy. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer of The Selling Agency where we coach humans how to sell to other humans. Because if you sell like you're just slinging someone else's stuff and you don't really own the business, you're not going to really get the business. That's right. <laughs> so that's the perfect introduction. We have a very special guest today. Her name is Alice Hyman and she is sales royalty, which you'll understand what that means in just a second. And we, she's going to talk about how to own your territory like a boss, which actually allows you to be a top one percenter. Yeah. Yeah. Alice has some great insight. She works, she's a, she teaches sales at the University of Nevada, uh, Reno. Nevada, Reno. Okay. Um, she works with small businesses and she has a, a sales legacy that she's going to explain too. So watch this episode and uh, learn something. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Welcome, Alice. I'm so excited that you could be here with us today. I don't know. Um, we were kind of queuing you up before you came on, but you know, just so you know what we're saying about you, <laughs> Alice, you are sales royalty. So one of the very first, I don't care who's listening to this. I don't care what you think about your training company. Miller Hyman was a huge groundbreaker and that's your dad. Hyman was your dad. So um, anyway, so I just think it's exciting that you're here and that, you know, what you bring to sales for entrepreneurs is really exciting. But one of the things that, and I'm not going to try to make this too long, but one of the things that we talk about in the Solid Six Blueprint is your mindset is, your mindset is actually the most important thing. And most people don't get that. So they think it's what they're doing that's the most important thing. So I think it is one thing that we need to talk about. What do entrepreneurs do? But having an entrepreneurial mindset, like you're the CEO of your own territory, is what all the one percenters do. So right. I thought we could kind of introduce that concept to people who want to get to a solid six, because if you don't have that mindset of the CEO, you're the CEO of your territory, you're never really going to achieve those big numbers in sales. Mm -hmm. It's just a job then. I mean, it's just a job. Yeah. and You're just slinging someone else's crap. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think... I think what's important to know too is that um, Alice, you and I have this one particular thing in common too, is that you work with salespeople and you work with business owners. So right. it's super, I think that's super relevant when you're talking about um, owning your territory if you're a salesperson. So explain what you think that really means. Like in, in, in Alice's terms, explain yeah. what that really means for people to own your territory, be the CEO of your own territory. Yeah, I, I think that when people go into sales, first of all, especially when they're young, you know, I teach at the university, and so I see a lot of younger people who are going off into sales, but even people who get into sales with different avenues, they don't really know what sales is. We haven't had sales training in high school. We haven't had sales right. training in college, and then someone hires us to do sales, and especially with the smaller companies that we work with, there's no boot camp for sales. There's no sales training. There's no sales leader even sometimes to teach no. you sales. So the way that you end up selling is the way that you've been sold to. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you don't, you know, what, what knowledge do you have? It's sort of like being a parent. You parent the way you, you were parented unless you've learned something different in between. And so as a salesperson, with, with no training, you go out into it without a lot of knowledge and you just do what you do, what you've seen, what feels natural. Um, maybe you've read a book, but you just don't have a lot of training. You know, so how are you going to know what it is that you're supposed to do? So, of course, you know, I'm a big proponent of getting that sales education into the colleges, and we'll talk about that later. But 
what I think it means to own your territory is to, when you take this sales job, say to yourself, this is my world. And I get to define it within the parameters of the company that I work for. Yeah. And what I get to do is build the way that I'm going to be successful. So I'm not just going to go and do activity every day. I'm going to own this territory, this region, whatever they've given you and said, go get it, right? And it starts with thinking and mindset, not with doing. But most of us just run out there and go do it, right? <laughs> that's, that's how we are. And that's what they want us to do. But imagine if you had that entrepreneurial mindset and you owned it and you said, okay, this is mine to make something of. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a plan. Even, even if my, my boss or my sales leader or the owner of the company didn't tell me to make a plan, I'm going to make a plan for my sales territory, for not just that, for my career, for my life. Make a plan. And then go out and implement that plan. That's what owning it means. Not waiting for someone else to tell you what to do. Not uh, wondering, but, but planning and getting the help you need from everybody you can around you and then writing that plan down. And as you execute it, see if it works or it doesn't work, right? And yeah. continue to change it. That's how you're gonna be the top salesperson. You have a plan. Yeah, so I love Sean's. So I, I think a really good example of this is when Sean was in her job as the at the TV station. Because I mean, for boots on the ground, phone in the hand salespeople, it's great to talk about philosophies, but we really like to talk about really specific examples so people can sort of map onto it. So I'd love Sean for you to share your story, and then Alice, um, if you can kind of piggyback on that with some stories that you see where people have actually been the entrepreneur or the CEO of their own territory, what that can look like for somebody. So do you want to tell your story, Sean? Sure. And you, you may remember this one, Alice. I think I've told it to everyone about my first real sales job was at a TV station. And, um, and I grew up in a very strong ABC affiliate market and then moved to Memphis. And so I was like, yes, I got hired at the ABC station. <laughs> <laughs> only to realize that I know I didn't I've never been in a sales position before I didn't know you are waiting or you know, uh, or, or any of that kind of stuff and so the first week on the job when they put, locked me in a conference room with VHS tapes uh -huh, um, to understand <laughs> rating and a ratings book I went it's so funny oh crap I realized that they're willing to right. take a shot on someone who knew nothing because I was working for the worst station in the market, the absolute oh, dog no. in the market. And, and I, I give this reference because I think it's, it paints that picture. Reruns of Andy Griffith on Channel 50 <laughs> at 5 p.m. beat our 5 p.m. news ratings in every demographic. <laughs> I've been off the air at 32 years at that point with only 252 yeah. episodes in black and white. <laughs> But here I am. I mean, I'm not going to starve. So it was really, I had to sort of, to own my territory, to own yeah. that business, I had to find people who didn't want to buy ratings. I had to find people who wanted to be on TV. And I did that. And I was... Well, really but you that. came up with that That's idea. It, right. That was the difference. Right. And I think what other, I think what else is really important about what you're saying too, Alice, is owning your territory means you own everything. You own that product. That is your product. You own the production process. You own the communication. Um, right. It all comes back to you, that extreme ownership. Everything comes back to you. If traffic, or, oh, yeah, and our traffic department just invented new ways to mess up stuff. <laughs> but I had to own that. Like, you own all of it. All of it. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's hard to take ownership of something that isn't working, and people are afraid to do it. You know, as human beings, we have a need to survive, and, you know, we have – just basic instincts around things. And so it's really important to step into your sales job um, confident that you feel good about the product or service that you're going to be selling and the audience that you're going to be selling it to. So if nothing else, maybe you know nothing about sales, but you love radio or TV, right? And so you think, gosh, 
I'll really enjoy selling this. And I love small business owners who are going to buy the advertising. Right. So I feel good about that. When salespeople step into a job because they need a job, um, instead of because they're excited and enthusiastic and they love it and they love that, you know, have the passion, then it's, it's a mess and it's really hard to sell. And then you're just doing a job and not taking ownership. So I think that's a, one thing I really want to say to all the salespeople out there who are looking for a job or who are in a job. You need to sit still and quiet for a minute where nobody's around and you need to ask yourself, right? Um, <laughs> ask yourself, it, do I love this product? Am I passionate about it? Do I feel that it can really help people? And do I love the people that I have to go out and sell to and talk to? Are they my kind of people? Are they people that I enjoy helping? Uh, you know, small business owners or big, huge companies, or let's say even you're selling beauty products because you love the beauty industry and you love these little uh, hairstyle shops, you know, and the, the blow bars, and that's so exciting to you. Then every day you're going to wake up and you're going to own it because you love it. And it's going to be easy for you to make a plan and go out and do what you have to do and hit the street every day and talk to the people and develop the relationships and talk about the products as it is appropriate. When, and when it is appropriate because you, you love it and you know how much it's going to help that person versus I have a job and I'm selling this stuff and I like really don't even understand it. <laughs> do, you have a, do you have a story of one of your clients or students who, who acted like an entrepreneur, the CEO of their own territory? Oh, yes. Um, my good friend Heather, who I just adore to this day. Hi, Heather. Heather, I'm talking Hi, about Heather. you. Um, <laughs> Just, she's amazing. So she was actually in recruiting before she went into sales. And they're very similar in a lot of ways. Um, so she got hired, one of my clients, you know, we, I helped them hire, you know, so I talked to a lot of young salespeople and, you know, boots on the ground salespeople because I help hire all the time. So she came through and I, I loved her from the minute I met her because she had that glow, that passion. And she was really kind of nerdy, like a few of us that I won't name right now. And so this product was kind of nerdy. It was selling research, you know, and so I, um, I talked to her and I thought, gosh, I think she can do this even though she's never had a sales job before. She's just nerdy enough. She loves the audience that she's going to sell to and she likes our research that, you know, this company had. And so um, I thought, okay, you know, we got started and it was a little bit slow. And then, you know, luckily salespeople get a coach if you can. Uh, she had me as her coach and we talked about how she was going to own this territory. So she took hold of that unbelievably and she's, she's, you know, building a plan on her own time, not on work time. Right. She's figuring out what the next step is, where should we should go. You know, the owner maybe should be doing some of this, but she was doing it. Right. She cared so much about the customers. She cared so much about the product and the fit between the customers and the product. She built her plan. She had never been out selling before. She crushed it. Yeah. They loved her. I mean, she just had the energy and enthusiasm to make the calls and talk to the people and they just loved her. But she had that mindset going in because she liked the product and she understood it and she liked the audience she was selling it to. That's great. Yeah. So, so, but, uh, so here, go ahead, Sean, you're going to say something. Well, so I think it's really interesting. I, I mean, I think Alice, you and I have a lot of the same sort of client base and I, Diana talked about this a lot, maybe offline, but there's so much talk and hype about selling SaaS and into enterprise. I think everybody's fighting over the same enterprise clients. When you look at the makeup of the American economy, small business is what drives our That's right. Economy. That's right. That's right. So the majority of our salespeople are probably in smaller mid-sized businesses versus enterprise. Love enterprise business, been, I've sold for enterprise size organizations, but here's the thing. In small mid-sized businesses, often there is not a lot of sales structure. There's not a lot of sales programming. Oftentimes it's the owner, operator, managing partner who is the sales director probably. Shouldn't be, just saying. But so <laughs> for you as a salesperson, whether you're an enterprise or this mid-market small business, 
owning it also means you may have to invest in creating your own processes. You may have to find yes. your own CRM. Yes. You may have to make your own plan. Right. That's right. It's not all going to be laid out for you. No. You may have to hire your own coach or buy or your own training. A, your own assistant. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. the people that I know, they don't wait for their company to hire an assistant. They, they want to be out selling. Okay, now let's talk about my brother. My brother, Ted Hyman, is one of the best salespeople I have ever met in my entire life, hands down. Okay, he has been for all his years a boots on the ground, phone in the hand salesperson, and that is what he wants to do. He doesn't ever want to do anything else. Right. Um, you know, I love that's, it. that's what he loves, and he's worked for big companies and he's worked for small companies. Mm -hmm. And he is so entrepreneurial. Some people call them entrepreneurs, you know, so you work for somebody else, but you're entrepreneurial. He is always the top salesperson or one of the top salespeople. You know, when he first gets there, he crushes it. The last company that he, the company he just left, he did the largest deal they had ever done with, with uh, I won't mention because, you know, but a very big company that we all know. And they have a huge conference in San Francisco. Um, what? <laughs> so, how does he do this? Well, we're not naming names. <laughs> right, not naming names year after year after year. How does he do this? Because he is entrepreneurial yeah. and he takes it into his own hands. He's like, this is what they've given me, but this right. is what I've got. And then he goes out and he finds his own assistant because he knows they're not going to hire and there's no one to delegate anything to, even at gigantic, gigantic companies. He just left and went to a gigantic company. And they still expect salespeople to do all kinds of things that waste time and it drives me nuts. Well, he's not going to do that. He's simply not going to do it. In fact, that's why he left his last job. It's just like, not, you know, not going to do that. So get an assistant, get someone to help you get a student for 10 hours a week, $10 an hour. If you're crushing it, that's nothing, right? Nothing. Well, especially right? when you can go out and do a bigger deal. And I always compensated my assistants on the deals that I closed. So we set a goal for me. And then I would pay them if I met that goal because they were taking enough off my plate. So get smart about it. Right. So help yourself. Don't sit around. I guess what I'm saying is take ownership. Don't sit around and wait for someone else. If you work for a small company, they may not have any sales training. So what can you do? There's dozens of books. I have a bookshelf behind me full of sales books. Get a book and read it, right? There are podcasts galore that talk about it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. That, I mean, that, there's so much out there. Don't wait for someone to teach you sales. Go learn it yourself. Hire the help you need. Yeah. You know, take care of yourself. Make your plan and work your plan. Then find other salespeople and get a little mastermind group of your own going in your own neighborhood or via, you know, video uh, <laughs> mastermind group. I mean, just help yourself. Stop waiting around for other people to help you. There are no excuses. There are no excuses for not accessing stuff to make you better. Um, so much. Diane and I have a hashtag that we like to use. And I, I, this was my goal starting my agency. It wasn't necessarily to outperform my competition. It was to outlearn my competitors. Learn yes. how to outlearn. You can, and you can outlearn and outimprove anyone. If you, you outlearn, go do it. Just go do it. Yeah, it's something I pour value at my company. I'm sure it is at yours as well. But I, when people come to work for me, I ta I say, do you, you know, tell me about learning. How do you learn? Mm. You know, what do you like to learn? What What's your best way to learn? And then I say to them, don't work here if you don't love to learn, because I will throw something at you every single day that you need to read, that you need to listen to, that you need to learn, because we will be ahead of the pack. We will not be behind the pack. And if you don't like learning, don't work here. It's probably our really our number one core value. And if you ask my employees, they're going to tell you that because they're like, oh my gosh, you know, if you don't like to read, they, they tell the interns when they hire them from the university, if you don't like to read, don't work here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so speaking of reading, remember the children's book highlights? Do they still have highlights? Oh yeah, they do. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do Goofus and Gallant here. So just as sort of an example of do's and don'ts, so how you know if you're owning your territory or not. So I'll start. Um, and then you guys can jump in. So uh, I'll ha I have two of them. So there's the goofus and gallant moment. 
So it's, it's your annual meeting with your team and you are called to give a presentation about your territory and what happened last year and then what's going to happen this year. And they ask you, you know, why didn't you meet your quota? So Goofus says something in the market change, the competition, the pricing, the territory, right? And, but Gallant says, I see this about how I was going to market and how I'm going to remedy that is blah, -de blah, -de blah, and how I'm going to actually move into a trend with the market that I saw happen so that I can guarantee that I hit my quota this year is this, right? So they, uh, they take extreme ownership of what happened. It's never, look, if it is the product, then go somewhere else. Right? I mean, if it really truly, if you really truly are on the wrong train, get on a different train, but that's your call. You can't blame anybody yeah. else. Yeah, no blaming. The Absolutely. second Goofus and Gallant is um, so Goofus goes and tells the engineers what they should be changing about the product so that they could sell it better in the marketplace. <laughs> Gallant goes and sells what the hell they offer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys. Do you have some Goofus and Gallant moments? Uh, oh, God. Uh, let me think about that. Uh, I've, I've got one. All right, go. Okay, so this scenario is uh, your, your, let's just say your customer has a TV spot that's supposed to run during a specific <laughs> event. Maybe it's the Super Bowl. That would be a really expensive spot, right? Um, so, Go and the spot runs outside the Super Bowl time frame. Goofus goes to the client and says, you know what, this, this person in traffic messed it up. I checked it three times, but yet they still messed it up. I'm going to go have them fired. <laughs> oh, no. Alan says, you know what, I'm just going to own this, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to, you know, we're going to give you back three spots for ratings. You know, we're going to look and see what the rating performance actually was, and then we're going to make it up in the future. So, again, that goes back to owning it, right? That accountability. Right. Oh. All right, so I have one from yesterday, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> awesome. I, I, don't, I don't think my client will mind because he, he was goofus. He became gallant. <laughs> So uh, Goofus was sending out a lot of direct mail. It was time consuming and costly. And the message was not hitting home because it was all about him, his company, right? And so he's a business owner who also sells, which I work with a lot of those. Uh, and I said to him, so what kind of results are you getting from that? <laughs> you know what the answer was. So. Goofus would continue sending the direct mail, which he was doing for a while because that's, you know, he's like, well, I may as well keep sending it, you know, but it's time, money, resources, energy, right? Goofus keeps sending the direct mail, even though he's getting no response. Gallant instead talks to his sales coach and says, what can I do with that? <laughs> and starts calling people he knows to get introductions to those he wants to know. Love it. Love it. Perfect. All right, so at the so we're gonna do a little segment of I want you to pitch um, what you do for people, and then I think you've got a book coming out, so I want you to talk about that. Oh my and gosh! Then, <laughs> and John usually has a back of the envelope question that has nothing to do with our topic. <laughs> so, um, so don't be scared. Don't be scared. All right. Um, and then we'll and then we'll end this up. This has been an unbelievably valuable session. Anyway. Hey. So, what do you do for people, Alice? And then what book are you about to read? What do I do for people? So what I do really for people is lift them up. I mean, that's the essence of it. Because when you are selling and things are going well, you're confident, you're out there, you're crushing it, the money's coming in. I mean, you're, you know, you're on a high, you're doing great. And that's what I want. I want everybody to be way up there, right? So that's, it, that's what I do. I lift people up. How I do that specifically is I work with closely held companies. They're usually owner led. They may have some investors from venture or, you know, from private equity or family. Um, but they want to increase their sales rapidly and exponentially, right? Like the thing is, most of them don't come from a sales background. So they want to hire salespeople. They want to learn about the sales themselves and they want to get better at sales so that they can do this. 
all of them have a business to business complex sale. So that means they're small companies selling to companies a hundred times their size usually. You know, maybe they're three, five, ten million, and they're selling to billion or multi-billion dollar companies. So they need to learn how to handle the complex sale. They need to learn that it's not a transaction, that there are multiple buying influences, there are long sales cycles, there's complexities, there are there's lots of competition, there's high dollar stakes all of these complex things that they really have to know how to navigate. So that's what I teach them to do. And I teach them how to set up their entire sales process so that they can be wildly successful. Not just successful, wildly, wildly successful. successful. <laughs> cool. So that's what I do. I, you can't tell that I love it at all, right? <laughs> um, so I do get involved with the business owners always and sometimes with the investors. And, you know, some of these companies are 50 million, 100 million. I love the little ones, though, too, because they're so much fun to take somebody from 3 million to 6 million or from 10 million to 20 million. It's, it's so exciting, right? But so these business owners, these entrepreneurs, these founders, they need to hire salespeople. Boots on the ground, phone in the oh, hands. Man, salespeople. Yes. And so I have to help them hire the best salespeople because small companies can't hide a crappy salesperson. No. no. And they can't afford to make mistakes hiring a salesperson and have to get rid of them because it's so expensive for them to make those mistakes. And then that bad salesperson can really give them a bad name the, the short time that they're out there or, or worse yet, just waste their money taking you know, the base salary and not making any deals. So it's, this is, you know, a serious concern for these small business owners. So I help them with these kinds of things. And of course, you know, back to the complex sale, when you're hiring a salesperson, you need to find the right people who know how to handle a complex sale. Not every salesperson does and not every sale is complex. So not every salesperson would need to know that, but that's my background. And you mentioned my family uh, business, Miller Hyman earlier on. And my dad is, uh, you know, Steve Hyman still alive and well. In fact, he's helping with that book you mentioned. But I want to mention two books that every salesperson should read that okay. has to work in the complex sale. And they are books that were written by my dad and his partner, Bob Miller. So one of them, of course, is right here. I don't know where, uh, but this is Strategic Selling. And this is really going to teach a salesperson to take ownership of the complex sale and yeah. figure out how to map it. So get this book, even if you have, you've had no sales training, your, your sales leader or your owner hasn't helped you, this book will help you with a complex sale. It will help you navigate and help you map it. And then there's a companion book called Conceptual Selling. Not sure that's on the other bookshelf over there. Uh, that will help you once you map it and figure out who you need to talk to and what they want and how they're gonna win, then the conceptual selling book helps you understand how to have a great sales call with them, how to understand them, how to listen to them, and really do a great job learning whether it's a good fit before you start to sell anything at all. So those are two books that everybody, every salesperson who has a complex sale needs to get. And then the, the owner of your business, needs to get my new book. Yes. Working title is More Sales Now. Ah. <laughs> and that, that's, like that, that's what, not, not, because they, that's what they do. They call me and they say, we need more sales now. Right, right, right. Yeah. And unfortunately, it doesn't always work that way. <laughs> no. But I, I want it as quickly as possible. I would like to, for all you business owners watching, introduce the term pipeline to you. <laughs> Pipeline. Oh, pipeline. and Alice is the Alice mastered pipeline. pipeline for you. Yeah, she yeah. mastered my pipeline for me. Absolutely. It's everything. So when people say, what's the first thing I need to know? And I call it a sales funnel because yeah. I like that picture better. A pipeline to me is kind of skinny and narrow and you put one or two things at a time. I like funnel because you put a lot in the top so you never let it run dry. And then the things that need to come down and come through and end up as a deal. But the first thing you have to do is master that sales funnel. And that sales funnel is tracking your sales opportunities. Mm -hmm. And that's what we don't do well enough. We don't track our sales opportunities well enough. So salespeople need to get a handle on that. The business owners, the sales leaders need to get a handle on that. And um, it's super important. So if you want more sales now. More sales now. 
you need to get a handle on your funnel. On your <laughs> get a hold of Alice. Get on the waiting list for that. Yeah, right. So, Sean, what's our back of the envelope question? Okay. Oh my so, gosh, here we go. I love your mug, by the way. The irreverent oh, sales. May I? May I? I'm sharing my mug with everyone. Yes. I may. Mean, thank you. Thank you so much. I love my mug. <laughs> So if you if you've ever had the chance to meet Alice in person, um, people don't just say, "Oh, Alice Hyman." They say, "Oh, I love Alice Hyman." <laughs> Thank you. Because you have the personality that makes people feel special. You have the personality that, like you say, lifts people up. You have the personality that your own energy brings others energy, right? So a lot of the the encounters we've had with Alice have usually centered around some sort of spirits. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so I just was curious, but I don't know the answer to this. Alice, are you margaritas or martinis? Oh, margaritas or martinis. Oh my God, that is such a hard choice for me. <laughs> I, um, mm, okay, do I have to pick one? Let me see. Yeah. Mar this are martinis. Oh, oh, uh, I just, I don't know. I mean, I love them both so much. And they have that, the, the, the thing is that the um, martinis have that funnel shape that I love. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and sometimes they put margaritas in a glass like that too. So I don't really know if I can choose. All right. What are you having right now? What's in your cup right now? <laughs> Very strong Kona coffee is in my cup right now, but I, okay, um, I'm going to say martinis. I don't know. It's so hard. I really, I, it's the fun I'll tell you the secret though. Honestly, I'm a bubbly girl, <laughs> but I love, I mean, like, seriously, I would go to a restaurant. I would, or if there's a really cool martini, I'll try it. If I'm in a place where there's margaritas, I love like a jalapeno margarita or some really, you know, spicy margarita. And I love a good bubbly. It's just, you know, good bubbly wine. Ooh, mm, yeah. <laughs> well, these are important things we need to know because they are. we're not all work all the time. Like often I'll ask pancakes or waffles, tacos or pizza, but it's, we're, I, it speaks to we're a whole person and that's what sales is. It's, it's a whole yes. person kind of career, so. Thank you, Alice, for uh, sharing more about how we have to own it in yeah. our sales profession. Own it. Have that entrepreneurial mindset and don't wait for anybody to give you what you need. Go get it yourself. Bam. Bam. So good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Alice, thank you so much for being here. I know you're super busy, and I think you have probably 700 requests every day <laughs> to content. So thank you for bringing your brilliance to our boots on the ground, fun of the hand bodies. Absolutely. You are so welcome. It's such a pleasure. It's so much fun to be with you. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we're going to see you later. Bye, Alice. Bye, Bye. Alice. Okay. Those were some seriously powerful and motivating nuggets. I'm, I'm, I mean, I own my own business, but I want to own it more now. I cannot believe we got Alice. Yay. We got Alice on the show. It's so good. Yeah. If you ever have the opportunity to meet Alice, she's just, she brings so much energy and so much vivaciousness and she loves what she's doing and she loves people and it just comes out and every one of her cute little fours. Yeah, it's adorable. And she, she is so for people. She is so for your success. So that was really cool. Anyway, so we're just going to kick this out by saying stop hoping and start selling. That's right. Bye. Bye.